welcome back we were discussing uh, from past few days regarding the mental workload as analysis or assessment right so today we will be talking about uh, critical path analysis for multimodal activity so uh, what we tried to do in our earlier uh, mental workload assessment we tried to understand suppose in nasa tlx that we we have different di you know dimensions and based, uh, based on those dimensions what we did we tried to understand the mental workload right so here in this particular uh, method in the using this particular method what we do we try to understand in a whole process what are the critical pathways are and what are because of what uh, critical incidences the you know process is getting affected so we will try to understand that we will try to analyze that and then only we will be able to uh, do the next step of uh, intervention so first let us understand what this tool is all about and how we should go ahead with this uh, particular tool now uh, as i mentioned this particular uh, tool that critical path analysis it's a project management tool so when you have a detailed system so in that particular detail system what you can do you can have a project management tool using that particular tool what you will do you will have the critical pathways and you are going to identify those pathways and you are going to analyze it so this is used to calculate the combination of tasks okay so maybe uh, three tasks or four tasks so to calculate the combinations of tasks that will most affect the time taken to complete the job so that's why i said it's critical path because of which critical uh, portion of the uh, whole job is uh, you know getting affected you need to identify that using this particular tool so it's a you know we, we are going to calculate the combinations of those task we are going to uh, understand the combinations of those tasks which are actually causing the uh, time consumption in the whole job so the entire path or the process to complete the job is called critical path okay so the entire process okay the entire process uh, where these small combinations are there we will be calling it as critical path so any changes in the task on the critical path will change the overall job completion time of course because if you have four critical paths or six critical paths if you do some changes in one of them the whole time duration taken by the system or taken by that particular job to complete will change right so our objective or our intervention points are which is which portion of that particular path is more critical and and more uh, time consuming we have to start our intervention program at that particular point so it will actually give you an uh, an indication that where the interventions are possible to start it not only gives you an understanding of the uh, starting of the intervention it also help us to understand before and after the uh, how sim uh, how you are making the job simple okay so uh, what is the possible way to simplify the job what are the elements you can take out so that the whole process of that particular job becomes simple okay so uh, this this method is very very useful when you have a, a no long run system when you have a big system to uh, go ahead okay so the critical path is defined both in terms of what we call it time 
okay what is the total time taken and the what are the modalities so time definitely consumption or performing that particular task and the modalities how you are going to do that so two major factor actually present here one is time second is modality so time says that uh, a particular task will need to be completed before a subsequent task need to begin right so task 1 task 2 task 3 like that you have and if task 1 time consumption is not sufficient enough to start the task 2 the task 2 will be uh, will be stalled right so it will not be able to start so we need to understand the the time taken for the task 1 need to be within this particular period of time now if we see after the critical path analysis that this task one is not possible to complete within this much time then what we have to do we have to do some kind of intervention so that time two can st uh, task two can start on time okay this is the uh, no, uh, way how we use time and in modalities the two tasks sharing the same modalities must be performed in a particular series if the series are not connected with each other we may miss the you know uh, sequence okay if we miss that then the whole perf uh, the performance of the system will deteriorate okay this is all about the critical path analysis now let us understand the procedure so of course we will start with the defining the task first we have to define the task after that defining the task in terms of input and output the sensory modalities okay so uh, like in hta hierarchical task analysis we start with the input okay what are the inputs available for that particular job and at the end of the process what i am going to get okay so now if this end point uh, starting point and end point are free fixed then we can actually define this particular task once we define the particular task properly with input and output we have to construct the chart showing the task sequence and de you know, uh, dependencies between the task so there are maybe uh, five tasks okay now task 1 and task 3 are interconnected however task 2 task 4 are independent and maybe the result of task 1 and task 2 is connected with the task 5 okay so how they are dependent on each other once we understand the sequence of these tasks we will be able to connect them so assign once we have uh, once we have the sequence once we establish the dependency on each other what we will do we will assign the time what is required for each uh, task okay task one this much time task to this much time like that we will be assigning it now once we assign the whole numbers like you know uh, in minutes or seconds whatever it is whatever unit you are using once we assign it what you have to do you have to calculate the forward pass because from one to another how it is getting forwarded forward pass and the backward parts because it may happen in a particular system there is a feedback mechanism so when one information is passing from one task to another so how it is happening and how the ref, uh, you know, feedback is coming back to the another task so calculate the forward pass and calculate the backward pass so let us uh, again recall the whole process first we are defining the task we are defining the specific input and specific output then we are constructing the uh, you know, chart in a particular sequence which shows the dependency of different tasks in a whole job once we have that chart ready what we have to do we have to assign the time taken for each task once the time taken for each task is given then we have to calculate the forward pass and backward pass 
once this whole thing is ready ultimately we have to calculate the critical path okay so this is the whole process of doing the critical path analysis now let us go ahead with the proper steps like you know explaining each steps in detail okay so fine first is the defining task it is done in the form of task analysis any task analysis okay so it's not that always you need to do hierarchical task analysis however if you can do it that is better but here also flow diagram uh, sometimes work so otherwise it can be a simple decomposition of the activity into a constituent task okay decomposition one by one one two three four five like that so now here in this particular example for an automated tailor machine what we did like you know always everybody knows this example probably you know how we use our atm atm uh, machine okay so um, here we start with the retrieve you know your card is in is with you in in your wallet or in your bag or in your pocket so you retrieve that card from wallet insert that card into atm machine so this way we are actually decomposing the whole task then recall the pin because you have to give the pin to the atm then wait for a screen to change because once you give an input to the machine it will give an output so there is a pause okay there is a time lapse then uh, whatever information is getting displayed in the screen you have to read it promptly now here why prompt if you look at the uh, atm behavior you see if you don't respond within certain amount of time it will the uh, that whole system will start from the beginning right so this particular so that's why i mentioned read the instruction very promptly type in uh, digit that particular pin whatever is uh, mentioned over there then listen or watch the you uh, know confirmation whatever uh, different machine performed differently repeat the 6 and 7 because you know uh, if it is wrong then again you have to retype if it is correct then you you go ahead something like that and again you can wait for the screen to change for the next step this is only how you are accessing the atm now after that money transaction or balance enquiry or for other thing you have steps to follow so this is simple uh, portion of uh, while using atm how you are actually accessing the atm okay so this is the decomposition so input it starts from the where it starts it starts how you are recalling your wallet you know retrieving your uh, card from the wallet and it ends after you give the pin to the atm uh, atm uh, you are waiting that you know the screen to be changed to the next step okay so this is uh, for example we are taking this particular portion and we are defining the task now here in the second step define the task in terms of input and output first you define the task so you have a flow chart okay now here for each portion what is your input what is the output what is your input and what is your output so in terms of input and output in terms of sensory modalities now let us understand what we have done over here in the left this this particular column the same task whatever is this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right so we have given the these things okay right now define the task in terms of input normally these are the things possible for this particular example for other example maybe it is different so here it's some kind of manual activity when you are retrieving the uh, card either using your left hand or right hand or both hand 
then for in uh, no uh, then you may have uh, some visuals like through vision you are re re getting responses uh, also from the auditory then cognitive and then speech okay now let us understand for each step like retrieve card what are the sensory inputs are there now when i am talking about retrieve card your left hand and right hand both are involved however the speech auditory visual cognitive and any other system may not be active okay whereas in inserting that particular card in the machine if you are a right handed person you are going to use your right hand whereas if you are a left handed person you can go for the left hand now it depends okay for this particular example it's a right handed person then recall the pin recall the pin is absolutely cognitive right you you are actually remembering that what is your pin so here it is cognitive you are giving that then screen change screen change means the human the operator is not doing anything they are just waiting that machine to respond okay when you are waiting to machine to respond that means system is actually active okay now read promptly how you are reading you are looking getting the information so you are perceiving the information through your vi uh, vision right so this uh, sensory information is required so it's visual now again what you are doing you are typing the digit because you are typing the pin whatever you remembered in this particular step you are typing the team How, if it is a right handed person of course he or she will do with the right hand then then you are waiting the response now here two things possible sometimes there is no auditory signal okay in some some uh, certain mes machine uh, there is no auditory signal so maybe only visual some cases it is auditory so for this particular example it was auditory that's why we mentioned here auditory and then screen check again it is going for the system so this way we are actually creating a chart okay for each task each small elements how they are getting responses so sensory input and output clear so relating the task steps to the modalities so modalities we are trying to identify through this particular step now the next step is third step the construct the chart showing task sequence and the dependence between the task so first you are you constructed it now you are giving numbering 1 2 3 4 sequence and how that sequence is dependent on each other now let us understand for this particular example so a specific task needs to be completed before another task can commence and the modalities need to be finalized or need to be mentioned okay two tasks in the same modalities must occur in a series so if it's a manual and right handed using your right hand you have to do so it has to come one after another both if comes together you will not be able to perform the operator will not be able to perform right so the task in the same modalities must occur in a particular series so in the following diagram an action on arrow approach is used so you can see these arrows right these arrows we gave okay each node is linked by an action which uh, takes a definable length of time and the example ta takes the task sequence up to a first digit being entered okay till here now let us understand so retrieving card from the wallet so that is one then you are inserting the task so second then screen change and then actually four now recall is connected here so you are doing the activity you are actually using your hand to take the card out also 
in simultaneously you are remembering the pin to be fit here okay to to be fit here so once you you give that particular pin then you are actually waiting uh, for the screen to be changed and once there is a screen change you are actually reading it very promptly and you are giving the uh, pin to atm okay so that it can go to the next step so this way uh, initial part of the cpa can be uh, no can be chopped out can be drawn fine so this is the constructing uh, the chart uh, showing the task sequence and dependency between each other so here this portion is dependent on this okay you should remember it your pin otherwise you will not be able to proceed further now once it is there then actually what you are doing you are assigning the time to this particular task okay here for this particular example we calculated in the millisecond so retrieving card insert card recall pin screen change read promptly type the digit and wait for the beep so for all these thing we have calculated these milliseconds okay time now what I suggest over here, it's not possible to get all these values, you know, uh, physically on the spot. So, whenever we are actually collecting data for such cases, what we suggest, we do a proper video recording of the whole process. And once we are back to the laboratory, we, we uh, take the data from the videotape. It's not that we suggest someone to go on the field and collect all this information. So there are a lot of, there will be lot of chances to, you know, uh, get wrong data. So always from the video recording, you should retrieve this type of data. So this previous diagram is redrawn in the uh, in, in this particular form of a table, which helps in the following steps. So you are actually getting the um, time requirement for each step, uh, which is being performed in the ATM. Okay. Now once this is done what you have to do the calculate the forward pass and calculate the backward pass now let us understand it in detail so begin at the first mode of previous figure and assign an earlier start time is zero okay the finish time for the task from this node will be zero plus the exact duration uh, of that particular task step. So, retrieve task suppose 50 millisecond. So, it started with 0 500 millisecond. Okay. Then next step is insert card 350 millisecond. So, before I go for recalling the test, how much time I have? 500 plus 350, 850 milliseconds. Okay. So, uh, it is a plus. Okay. Enter the value in the table and proceed to the next node. The earliest finish time of one task become the earliest start time for the next task. So, earliest estimated time for screen what will be 500 plus 350 plus 780. So, earliest start time for screen change is 500 millisecond plus 350 millisecond plus 780 millisecond that is the possibilities okay that is the possibilities for earliest earliest start time for screen change earliest start time for screen change fine a simple rule is to calculate EST on the forward uh, forward pass because it's a plus plus plus. When more than one task feed in into a mode, uh, it takes the highest time always because you know you have one more than one or two. Now calculate the forward task. So you know here you can see as I mentioned for this it is 850. Then it's again uh, zero 
right then this because plus this plus this plus this is this right like that you have to do the calculation clear because this recall this recall you know it's like you know uh, when you are here you can do this as well right you can do that as well because when you are actually retrieving that card you are actually remembering so maybe it is zero for this particular case okay so that way you can uh, do the calculation now calculate the backward pass begin at the last node and assign the latest finish time whatever the maximum possible okay so to produce the latest start time subtract the task duration from the latest finish time so the time on the connection uh, on that particular connection became the latest finish time for that particular task when more than one task feeds into a particular node take the lowest time we have to take the lowest value so for this also you can see the calculation calculation is this this way you can calculate it for uh, latest here it is 0 then you have here it will come here 350 it will be 350 okay and then you can go ahead okay this is typing mistake. it's 350 okay then you can go ahead that's this is called backward pass now once this table is ready actually what you have to do you have to identify the critical path the critical path consists of all nodes that have zero difference between est and lft okay so earliest and latest that portion you have to find out so critical path consists of all nodes that have zero difference that has zero difference okay so the task step on recall pin has a non-zero float which means that it can be started up to 350 millisecond into the other task without having an impact on the total task performance you can see if you this particular right so here no not here so here if you if you remember this Rick, uh, point you know uh, this particular pin after 350 millisecond as well you have no impact on the whole process you can remember it at the very beginning when you are actually taking out the card however if you don't remember but you remember just while inserting that card and getting that information at that point also if you remember that also will work and there will be no delay in the whole job okay so the, uh, that I mentioned so uh, it is possible to perform the calculation sorry it is possible to perform the calculations using commercial software and you know sometimes we have some kind of you know um, arrangement you can uh, uh, write your own logic algorithm and you can have it in uh, your uh, computer as well you can do this so we have uh, different types of softwares for these calculations okay now calculate the critical path under this here there are the floats so these are zero okay so you understand now you understood how thus uh, things to be done so where is like you know wherever these zero differences between est and lft there are the critical paths so if these are the zeros right these are the zero that means these are the critical paths and you will get an impact if there is a problem in this particular portion of your task okay now what is the advantage structured and comprehensive procedure can accommodate parallelism because you can go one by one in a parallel sequence in user performance and also it provides reasonable fit with observed data 
that that is why these are uh, no uh, these are very much beneficial and you can take advantage of this method for su such cases. Whereas, we have some kind of disadvantage it is very much tedious and time consuming because you have to check the videos uh, several time because it is not very um, uh, easy to retrieve the data from from the video. Modality can be uh, very difficult to define because many cases you no know, simultaneous things are happening ok. Sometimes the inputs are varied in nature. So, those cases modality identification is difficult can only be used for activities that can be described in terms of performance time. If there is no no task which is being described which is possible to describe in terms of performance time then we will not be able to use this particular tool. Times not available for all actions if there, there are some actions which will not have any time to perform then you cannot use it and can be overly uh, you know reductionist particularly for tasks that are mainly cognitive in nature ok. For, for such cases we will not be able to use this particular um, uh, method to understand the criticality of the task. So, uh, let us understand that what is required. So, it depends on the, uh, uh, the job like you know if the task is real complex then it will take lot of time uh, to, uh, for, for the researcher to understand and giving the mass. So, the you know training time it depends on the how complex the job is ok. We really cannot say it is 2 hours, 3 hours or 4 hours. It, it absolutely depends how the complex the job is and it needs only pen and paper. So, you need to actually calculate all the numbers right and you have to give the input and soft if you have a software initial numbering initial um, uh, time calculation anyway you have to do ok. Once you have that maybe you can uh, get the values or critical paths from those softwares ok. So, these are the things available for the critical path analysis based on the context based on the type of research you are doing you have to choose that is this particular method or particular tool useful for your uh, mental load assessment or not ok that is all and next we will be doing for the situation awareness measurement ok. So, that is all for today and I again uh, as I do for all other methods I suggest everyone to practice it with a, uh, your own example ok. You take any uh, situation, you take any context and try to implement it. So, here I used ATM, ATM uh, where you can uh, which you can do by yourself or maybe I did from inserting the card till uh, no next uh, after in, uh, giving the pin uh, what is happening. You can go ahead further you can, if you want to withdraw money you can uh, take those steps and you can do the analysis like that you can perform and in the discussion session let us discuss it if you find any difficulties further ok. Thank you for today we will start the next class tomorrow. Thank you. Mm -hmm.